Hello, this is David D. Hilscher with Dissident Science. Today we're going to start a new section in Dissident Science, which is reading, teaching you guys how to read science articles. These articles are really full of it, basically. They say they spew out lots of words, lots of concepts, and worse, they talk about it very confidently. And I'm going to show you that most of it is, as my mom used to call, hooey balooey. And anybody can learn this. My mother, uh, rest her soul, she was in my documentary and didn't know anything about science here. And really didn't, she knew stuff about science, but she really didn't know the technical side of it. And it turns out that after a number of years being with these scientists, she started reading these articles and said, Dave, this is full of hooey balooey. So um, I'm going to teach you and go through some articles here. And we're going to do this once in a while, uh, probably more often than we want, so you guys can learn to cut through and see this is mostly baloney. So um, we're going to take a look at this one. It just says, and this is Newsweek, time travel is mathematically possible with new mind-boggling model. We're going, to, we're going to look at something. Okay, there's some words you can see here already. Time travel, um, again, that's like a time is a place that you can travel in very strange concept itself, uh, is mathematically possible. Um, what does that mean, mathematically possible? Does that mean, well, we've done calculations, we think it's physically possible? No, it means that somebody came up with the math and they think it's possible. Um, and the truth of it is, that's one of the big problems. With a new mind-boggling model, now you have a real big conflict there because you're talking about math and a model. And models are not math. Math can describe models, but they are not models themselves. So let's go down here and take a look at the very first sentence. We we'll probably won't even get past that because there's so much garbage here. Many have dreamed of figuring out how to, how to time travel and dismissed it as impossible, which it is. Uh, now researchers have proposed a mathematical model that makes time travel possible using concepts of Einstein's general relativity coupled with the hypothesis that time is not in a separate dimension. My goodness, I can speak an hour on that sentence alone. Let's take a look at some problems here. Very first sentence, let's take a, take a look. Mathematical model. Research per there is no such thing. There's no math, models are models. Model is a, a round thing over here, it's this way. There is no mathematical model. There are mathematical constructs, theories, um, ideas, but their models are physical. Math is not, and the two will not meet. Math can you be helped to use to help us use to look at the physical world and to calculate things, but it's not a model. Now you may say, well, how do you know? Or you're not a mathematician. Well, I happen to have a bachelors of science in mathematics. I love math. I love math. But math isn't the physical world. Never will be. Okay, let's take it, go further. Time travel possible. That makes time travel possible. Now, I'm also a linguist. I got a master's in linguistics. I work with computers and human language. And so what we have here is someone saying, researchers have proposed a mathematical model uh, that makes time uh, travel possible. First of all, the person writing this, whoever the author is, um, I don't know who they are, Hannah Osborne. Hannah, you're writing it, you're lying to the people already because you're saying that makes time travel possible. You're making it sound like it's a fact, that it can be done, that it, this is, it, you're saying that, that makes time travel possible. This makes time travel possible. It is not, you're a bad journalist, you should say that they are proposing that that time travel is possible, but it is not a fact. But this sentence makes it seem like a fact. That's one of the big problems, folks. We read this over and over, and we start believing it because it's like anything. You repeat it enough times, people are going to believe you. Using concepts, let's go to the next sentence, using concepts of Einstein's theory of general relativity. Okay, well, if you have no idea what that is, it doesn't matter. They can say what they want. So if you look at certain things, they're going to talk about general relativity, which basically says that there's a space-time and that it curves with mass curves space-time. Of course, 
space time is nothing they never tell you what it is they call it space time they call it the fabric of space time because they don't know what it is so right now it's a vacuous statement it means nothing but what what that what they when they're using this einstein's theory of relativity they're oh general relativity oh that's using einstein einstein's still a god we still worship him etc then this is really fun coupled with the hypothesis. So you take general relativity, which is a vacuous theory because it just talks about space-time, which we have no idea what it is. There's no physicality. It's all math. There's, it's not a model. It's not a description of gravity. It's a description like, like Newton about how bodies, perhaps you can calculate how they fall through gravity using these equations, but it does nothing more. It doesn't give us what it is, never will. It doesn't say what it is. Now we take that space-time nothingness, which is a fictitious model, and we couple it with something. What's that mean? Couple it with the hypothesis. So we're not only taking a general relativity, we're coupling it with a hypothesis. How, how vacuous, how stupid can you be with all this? And of course, we even go further now, and we talk about we, the hypothesis that time is not a separate dimension. Dimensions. There are, there are three dimensions, folks. Three. There's X, Y, and Z. There's not a fourth. Temperature, pressure, those aren't dimensions. Those are things we calculate, things that we've invented to help us do things that are useful, but they're not real. The only dimensions are three. There are no parallel anythings, whatever. But this whole sentence is just, I can't take it. This is, I'm going to stop right now. We're going to be talking about a lot, lot more things later on. So anyways, I hope you're starting to get the idea. This is David D. Hilster. And remember, don't take what, what anyone says on faith. Stay critical. Stay thinking. This is David D. Hilster. Ciao for now.